through your arm. So they're actually pretty cool. You can't just make a bat, you can't just take, take a cylinder and grind it like it's bat shaped. There's a lot of math that goes into making a perfect bat. Okay, I want to show you a, a collision that, that I've enjoyed for about 20 years. What's the sweet spot? The sweet spot is, is the, the barrel, like right in the middle of the barrel. If you, if you hit the ball on the bevel, that's when the energy can't actually go anywhere, and that's what breaks the bat. Did you feel it? Yeah. It's like the very end and the bevel is the worst part to get hit with the ball. Okay. So apparently the video is just taking its sweet time. Oh, here we go. Can't get through there. Hey, no, I can do this. I just chip out. I can get through there. Just chip it out. Count the number of collisions. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I guess I should have chipped that. Did you count the number of collisions? No, I can do this. I just chip out. I can get through there. Just chip it out. No, I can get through there. Watch me. Okay. Before YouTube, sorry about the pixelation. This was before. This is before YouTube. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, ball on ball on club, pretty close to elastic. Ball on tree, pretty close to elastic. Ball on crotch, not even close to being elastic. That was a lot. Yeah, a lot of energy. I'm sorry. What? The math of that? There's. It would involve calculus. There's way too many, way too many objects in in play. These are these are future these are future naval officers. This is this is at the military academy in Annapolis. <laughs> okay, so collisions can be elastic or inelastic. Okay, collisions can be elastic or inelastic. Um, an elastic collision, these are, the, these are the hallmarks of an elastic collision. Most important thing about an elastic collision is kinetic energy is conserved. But in addition to elastic collisions, objects don't deform, break, or stick. Okay. So a classic elastic collision, um, objects do not deform, they don't break, or they don't stick to each other. And most importantly, kinetic energy is conserved. Exactly. Yeah. That would be that would be an an inelastic collision. Boop. So, an elastic collision would be basically bounces right back into my hand. Boop boop. You know. So, yeah. Some sports, the ball is specifically made inelastic, as, as inelastic as possible, so as not to hurt you. Um, yeah, some less so. Okay. So an inelastic collision, objects may stick together, and uh, you're gonna lose kinetic energy. And I'll, we'll do some sample exercises of that in a second. So, in an inelastic collision, the sum of all the kinetic energies of the objects before a collision is always larger than after a collision. Some energy is lost. So don't deform. Would that be like if you do like a clay ball on the wall? Yeah. Yep. If you had two balls, and this is actually a class example, I. I just didn't get it wired up in time. Um, one, you have a super ball, 
that has a certain mass and you have a ball made out of clay of the exact same mass and you put them on a pendulum, you drop them both and the super ball will bounce and the clay ball will stick. So um, here's the crazy thing. I wish I, I should just do this for you, you um, set it up later. I'm sorry, what? The two black balls, the one you drop will bounce and the one sticks. Exactly, yeah, the happy sad balls. Did those ever come back, the ones I loaned out? I still have them. Okay, <laughs> just don't, you eventually bring them back, so, so, because otherwise I'll run out of them. But yeah, the happy sad balls, um, one bounces and the other one doesn't because the molecules just, they, they move past each other. Okay, so there you go. So, oh, sorry, yeah? So, we did it when they were, like, the dynamic cards were, one was still, mm -hmm. You want to bounce them off to each other? So in inelastic collision, those bounce back. Okay, so in, in inelastic collision, I'll get my, my Velcros. So an inelastic collision looks like this. Okay, so they stick. You can also sometimes like make them stop too. Yeah. Yeah, well, anyway. Go. And just kind of bonk. Oh, they both, this is, yeah, they just pushed off each other. But yeah, so an inelastic collision works like this. Boop. So like when you throw a ball through a window, it's definitely an inelastic collision. All right, so um, now we're going to start doing, adding variables to things. Everything in this class, guys, this is very important, really important for me. Um, and and for uh, Sean and Adam as well. Uh, everything in this class is two object linear momentum. Meaning there's one attacker, there's one target. The AP used to do three object two dimensional uh, momentum. So if you're doing you have an AP book and you're reviewing it and it shows objects like bouncing off each other in glancing directions, they don't do that anymore. Everything is linear, meaning everything strikes in the straight, same line. Um, that avoids, yeah, it's, it's really nice because we don't have to do sines and cosines and all sorts of crazy vectors. Um, so that makes it kind of easy. So no, no glancing collisions. So a glancing collision would be like a ball hits right up here and this one goes down, this one goes up. Like, pew! We don't do that anymore. Everything is straight lines. Yeah, in fact, that's, that's, that is typically the exercise. Like, the ball, the, the pool ball is 45 degrees and you need to hit a, something that's 85 degrees. What force and with what direction? And you're like, oh, I'll take a whole page to do all the math. Do it so the ball hits the other ball and they touch each other and they line up with the ball. All right. So uh, the mass of the attacking object is given uh, the, the letter M1 and the mass of the target object is given the letter M2. So the momentum of the attacking object is given the letter P1 and the momentum of the target object is given the letter P2. So these two strike each other and the result, M1 doesn't change, M2 doesn't change. The mass has never changed in this class. Okay. So again, there's another thing that we just don't have to worry about. Masses will never change. When the typical, the another typical exercise that we used to do, I thought it was actually kind of fun, but we don't do it anymore, is if you have a, like a landmine and it blows up, and you get a vector going this way, and a vector going this way, and a vector going this way. All those vectors cancel out. Don't have to do that anymore. Everything basically stays uh, in the same mass. Did you make a landmine and you showed to your class? Yes. Not really, but we talk about it. Anyway, um, so we add the letter F to uh, the momentums after the collision. So we would say the momentum P1F, momentum P2F, we would say velocity V1F, velocity V2F. So M1, V1, M2, V2, P1, P2, M1, V1, F, M2, V2, F, P1, F, P2, F. And if you like formulas, there's a formula. It basically says the momentum of the first object added to the momentum of the second object equals the momentum of the first object afterwards equals the plus the momentum of the second object afterwards. In other words, the whole pile of momentum that you have is conserved. Okay. The whole pile of momentum that you have is conserved. If it's perfect. No, no matter what. 
even in an inelastic collision, momentum is conserved. So momentum is always going to be conserved, always, always, always. Energy may or may not be conserved. <coughs> Okay, so when I was growing up, this is a horror story, so brace yourself. When I was growing up, um, in my physics class, we did a grand total of one lab. One, the whole freaking year. <laughs> this is the part of the reason I teach the way I teach. And it was involving that object up there. So that crazy triangular thing, that's called an air track. And the reason I mention it is some of you are going to go to a college that sucks. And they're not going to have a lot of good equipment. They're going to have air tracks. And air tracks are what we had before we had low friction dynamics carts. See, we have low friction dynamics carts. Well, this is the 21st century. In the 20th century, we had air tracks. And basically what an air track is, it's an air hockey table that's been folded in half. You know an air hockey table? Those little holes that keep the, the hockey puck floating on a cushion of air? Well, that's what an air, tra air track does. It has holes and it keeps these little gliders lo floating on a cushion of air. So there's no friction. One lab. One lab. Is it better? Yes. It's better for our experiments, but while you're doing the experiments, the whole class is because there's all these fans that are blowing through the air tracks and you can't understand a single thing anyone's saying. Imagine, imagine six microwave, or six, uh, six, yes, air compressors or vacuum cleaners all going at the same time. That's what I had to put up with. Okay. So, in the, uh, <laughs> Do it again. No. <laughs> you're like you're like my 3-year-old. <laughs> okay. It's a pretty good description. Your eyes are closed for so much. Okay, so with uh, guys, I do want to get through this. So we have 12 minutes left. I do want to get through this. So in this example, the green air, the green glider is the attacking glider. The blue glider is the target glider, and it's going to be an elastic collision because the button is selected for elastic. The green glider has a mass of one kilogram, how convenient, and the speed of the cart is going to be one meter per second. I want to show you now how we diagram momentum exercises. It's a lot of writing, but it's worth it. What you do is you write a table, and in this table you put before, and after, okay? So before, we have mass one and mass two, <laughs> mass two, okay? So before, mass one has a mass of one kilogram and mass two is 0.7 kilograms. Guess what? After, it's still gonna be one kilogram and 0.7 kilograms. Make sense so far? Now we need a column for velocity and momentum. I'm going to actually get to write out momentum. Momentum. The velocity of the cart, the green cart before the collision, is one meter per second. <coughs> the velocity of the cart after the collision is zero meter per second. I'm going to turn the lights on because this is pretty much where we're going to end for today. The other cart. Cart two. Cart two, yeah. Cart two is, yes, same, same. Cart two, M2. Um, so M1, M2. M2 is immovable, not moving. Okay, so far so good? Yes. So there are people in the room who already know what the momentum of M1 is. What is it? One. One. It's one kilogram meter per second. And the momentum of M2 is? Zero. Zero kilogram meter per second. Cool? Next. PT. PT is just P1 plus P2. What is PT? The moment, what is the total momentum in the system? One. One. It's one kilogram meter per second. P1 
PT is total, total momentum. The sum of the momentum of P1 and P2 before the collision. Here's the great thing about PT. Yeah, the PT here and the PT here is exactly the same. The momentum, total momentum in the system before the collision and the total momentum in the system after the collision have to be the same. They have to. It's the rule. Okay, they have to. So, are you ready? No. The velocity, guys. This one's actually kind of convenient because this one gives you the velocity of both. In a typical exercise, it'll give you the velocity of only one of them. The velocity of the first cart is now what? 0.1765 meter per second. Look at all those significant digits. And the velocity of the lighter cart is now what? 1.1765. So if you wouldn't mind, please uh, calculate the momentum of these two vehicles after the collision. First one is easy, yeah. Very good, yeah. Can we check that? There we go. Okay. 0.8235. Okay. 0.8325. I got a uh, kilogram meter per second. So uh, does that plus that, or does that equal one? Yes. Yay! The simulation works. Okay. See how that works? So again, this is a lot of, of writing, but it keeps you from making weird mistakes. Okay. If you just say, this is my momentum, velocity, and mass beforehand. This is my momentum, velocity, mass afterwards. If you didn't have the velocity of one of them, you would find it from the other one. You would find the momentum and then go back. So for instance, if it didn't give you the, moment, the velocity of the second cart, you'd find the momentum of the second cart and then divide by the mass to find the velocity. Which we're going to do quite often, actually. Okay. Now we're going to do an inelastic collision. In an inelastic collision, guys, in an inelastic collision, the two things are going to stick together. Okay. And I'm going to have you do the math before I even show you the simulation. So the first cart is still going to move at one meter per second, has a mass of one kilogram. The second cart still has a mass of 0.7. Please don't talk while I'm talking. And the second uh, cart is not moving. So there's still only one kilogram meter per second of momentum available to us. But then something interesting is going to happen. The after masses is not going to be 1 and 0.7. The after masses is going to be 1.7 kilograms. What should the velocity be? And we say 1 comma 2 for a velocity of 1 comma 2 final. They're going to be perfectly inelastic and they're going to stick. So what's the velocity going to be? One would hope, but can you do a math? I'm here to pick up my paycheck. How much do I owe you? Less than a hundred dollars? I don't know. Velocity is point. Okay, prove to me you can do this, that I'm not wasting my time. Okay. I don't know. Point five eight eight meter per second. So in other words, there's still only going to be one kilogram meter per second of momentum available to you. 
But now, the two things are going to stick together, and they're going to move together with the same velocity, sharing that one kilogram meter per second. Since the velocity is 1.7 kilograms, we just take the momentum, P, divide by the mass, and now we have our new velocity, which hopefully is going to be what you calculated. Let's see if you are right. Hey, look at that. Revel in your correctness. 0.59. Okay, cool. 0.588. You are correct. Fair enough. Okay. I don't use fractions. Fractions are not for me. All right. So, in a simple elastic collision, it's a yoga ball and a guinea pig. You've never done that before? Pretty much. Suppose I do. Well, obviously hers. <laughs> okay, guys. So let's finish with a, the classic momentum exercise, the bowling ball. So you're rolling a six kilogram bowling ball down the lane at 10 meters per second. 60 kilogram meter per second? So the P1 of the ball is just the six times the 10, right? Okay, you can do this in your head. Okay, cool. The ball strikes a one kilogram pen at rest, causing it to move backwards at 20 meters per second. How much, the, the pin, how much momentum does the pin have before the ball strikes it? Zero. Zero. It moves back in the direction of the ball at 20 meters per second. How much momentum did the pin absorb from the ball? 20. One times 20, right? So the pin left after a collision with 20 meters per sec kilogram meter per second of momentum. The ball entered the collision with 60 kilogram meter per second of momentum. That means the ball was the only thing that was moving. That means the whole system had 60. The pin left with 20 after the collision. How much is the ball left with? 40. 40. So P2 of the pin, 20. And the question, what is the new velocity of the bowling ball? 40. No, that's the momentum of the bowling ball. 40 divided by 6. 40 divided by 6. 6.6. 6. 6. Okay, good. P2 of the pin and P1 of the bowling ball. All right, cool. So, do you see what, do you see what happened here? This is a good place to stop. There's a minute left. Okay, do you see what happened here? The ball comes in with 60 kilogram meter per second of momentum. That's all the whole system has. The pin after the collision leaves with 20. Where did the 20 come from? The ball. The ball. So the ball went from 60 to 40. Divide by the mass of the ball, and you have the velocity of the ball. Yeah. Yes. That is 